This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. Check out our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, at youtube.com slash UCTV Prime. Subscribe today to get new programs every week. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for another edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. Alongside Allison Taylor, I'm Dave Marcus. Glad to have you with us. Today we're going to talk about two powerhouse women's sports programs on campus that are making the seasonal transition from indoor to outdoor. First, we'll visit and talk track and field right after this message. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. There are iconic figures in sport whose names are instantly recognizable and their sport is instantly identifiable. And we are very pleased to have one of those figures with us today. Jeanette Bolden is the coach of UCLA women's track for 18 seasons, former Olympic gold medal winner, coach of the US Olympic team. Welcome to Bruin Talk. Thank you, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's uh, the beginning of the outdoor season, as we mentioned. Uh, what has the team learned from indoor that's gonna transfer to outdoor? Well, first of all, you know, we have an extremely young team. I have 47 underclassmen. And uh, it's, it's just tremendous to coach all those young ladies. Uh, we just finished the Mountain Pacific Championship where just about over half of my team had personal best in the hurdles, the sprints, the high jump, long jump, triple jump, and the distance. So the future looks very bright for UCLA women's track. I, do you worry as a coach when your team members all have personal bests this early in the season? Well, you know, as a coach, you want that. You want them to continue to improve and do their best. And right now, we're just so excited for the outdoor season. Uh, the team is so young and wasn't really able to come around great for indoors. But we have Ida Storm, one of my fantastic, sweetest uh, uh, weight thrower. And she's going to the NCAA. She's ranked seventh right now in the country. And she's going to bring back some points for the Bruin women. You know, Ida Storm is a shot putter in the indoor. She throws the hammer in the outdoor. I always have a picture of her throwing the hammer through the roof of the indoor <laughs> arena but uh, uh, she has one of the great names in track. How do you recruit someone from Sweden to come to Westwood? You know, one of the things, uh, Coach Mike, Mike Maynard um, is our throws coach, and he has a very good connection with the Swedish athletes. And Ida has been on our radar for a very long time, won the junior championship, and she fell in love with UCLA, and, and she just has a great time here. 
with 47 underclassmen, like you <laughs> mentioned, who do you look to on the team to be that leader? Where do you find the voice of the team within the athletes? We have some fantastic captains. You know, Tori Anthony, my fantastic. Uh, Paul Walter is one of our captains, um, a runner-up at NCAA uh, in the 40 meter hurdles. Turquoise Thompson is one of my captains. Yasmin Woodruff, Kanai Richardson, and uh, Katya Goldring. I have five captains that really kind of rally the young ladies around. You were a great sprinter when you were an athlete. Just a little bit. Well, a little bit. <laughs> you got a gold medal hanging around your neck from the 4x100 relay in Los Angeles. Uh, as a sprinter, now you're the coach, and you have to learn about all the field events. Mm -hmm. You know, sprinters and field event people don't always uh, mingle that much when they're working out. Um, but, but as a coach, you've got to know everything about every event. How hard a transition was that for you to learn about all the different skills in all the different events? Well, as, as a world-class athlete, you learn to really have respect for the other disciplines. And one of my best friends is Jackie Joyner Kersey. As, she, as you know, she's a world, world leader in the heptathlon, and uh, she did seven events. So I, I kind of have a love of a <laughs> lot of different events, just learning and watching Jackie. And I really talk to my young ladies about being a team and coming together so as a coach it was very easy for me to make a transition from a world-class athlete to a coach and did you always have coaching on your radar you know believe it or not when I was here at UCLA I wanted I have a degree in sociology and I wanted to go to the School of Social Welfare I wanted to be a social worker and it came time for me to either go to do clinical work or go to the Olympic Games and I kind of chose to go to the Olympic Games and I think I kind of do a little bit of my social work now I was just going to say, I feel like being a coach, you have to have a little bit of social experience to be able to put up with that many young ladies. You've had incredible success here as a coach. What brings you the most joy? Seeing your athletes get that personal record, see the team get a victory, what brings you the most joy? You know, I, I love being here at UCLA, and you know, I'm a Bruin uh, through and through, and I think what gives me the most joy is seeing the development of my student athletes, their character continue to grow and thrive. You know, see freshmen come in, kind of confused, don't really know everything, the, the, the law of the land, and to them to go and blossom as beautiful seniors, that's really what gives me the most amount of joy, just the character development. Because, you know, winning, we're going to win some and lose some, but, but your character stands of who you are as a person. You talked about that desire to do social work. You're the executive director, the coordinator of the Jeanette Bolden Allergy and uh, Asthma Track, track Clinic. Mm -hmm. a asthma is a terrible problem, and it's something that has really become much more predominant in society. Uh, what is your interest in the allergy and asthma field, and how did you get involved in putting together such an effort? Well, I was born with asthma. And they kept telling me I was going to grow out of asthma, and um, I'm 50, so you know <laughs> I haven't grown out of it yet. But um, asthma has not stopped me, and I, and I want to always teach young people that asthma is not a handicap. You do have it, and something that you kind of have to deal with. At the same time, it gives you encouragement to go on and thrive as an athlete. And asthma and, and winning an Olympic gold medal do not go together, but I try to teach young people and adults that you can't achieve your goal even though you have asthma. Well, let's talk about your upbringing. I'm sure there were a lot of people that told you, you can't do this. Yes, it what was. Did it, what did it take to push through and say, hey, yes, I can? You know, I, I have very determined parents, and they always taught all of us that you can do anything you put your mind to. And I think the turning point for me was that when I was in elementary school, I was taken out of my home in Compton, California, and placed in an asthmatic home. And I actually lived there as a residential home for nine months. And they taught us that asthma really wasn't a handicap. They taught us different uh, athletic events. And I really got the courage and the, the determination that I can can achieve my goal. But that sitting in that asthma home was, was really a turning point for me. And what do you do in the clinic? How do you encourage the young athletes? I bring them together and introduce them to sports and talk to them and, and let them do it without under, with understanding that, you know, it's not a handicap. As long as you take your medication, as long as you warm up properly, you'll be okay. And, you know, I, I also visit, uh, go to Big Bear with the Asthma and Allergy Foundation to have a camp. And it's just a lot of clinics around the country for kids that have asthma. As a coach of an elite program, you are dealing with an incredible class of athlete. They all come in here fast. They all come in here strong. How do you how do you mold them? How do you push them? How do you work the technique to make them as good as they can be? 
You know, uh, as an athlete, you have a little bit of selfishness in you. You know, you, you really want to believe that you are the best, and you, you really are the best, and you want life to kind of surround you. And so what I try to do is, is to teach them that, you know, you have confidence. You're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days, but that doesn't determine who you are. It's your character and how you deal with those situations. And that I let everyone believe in that this is UCLA. And all of us are on one team, and that's the Bruin team. And once everyone buys into that, it's, it's pretty easy after that. Going back a little bit to your community service work, which I just think is incredible. You're <laughs> so involved in the allergy and asthma clinic, and you're also a coordinator for an amazing event, Marathon Kids. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how the athletes get involved here? I've participated it participated in it myself as an athlete, and I loved it. So share um, with us your Marathon thoughts. Marathon Kids is a fantastic event. I'm so happy that UCLA has uh, taken charge of this program here. It's really a program to help kids get active and become active. I mean, as you know, childhood obesity is a big problem in this country. And it's pretty a program to help kids actually run a marathon. They have to put in 26 miles. They start their first leg of the marathon here at UCLA in October. They do the next. The ending of their marathon here, usually around in March. And March 10th is the culmination of the marathon kids. And it has grown from uh, 65 buses throughout uh, LA Unified <coughs> School District to now over 100 buses of kids from the LA Unified School District. They come up here, a lot of them get an opportunity to come on campus. They've never been here before. Uh, the student athletes are just fantastic. From each sport, there's a representative, a large group of student athletes come and they cheer the kids on. They give them medals, they sign autographs, they get water bottles. And it, it's just to see the joy on the young kids' face, to see these, these Bruin athletes coming out and high-fiving them. It's just fantastic. Coach, of course, this is an Olympic year, and in, in Olympic years, track and field gets a position of prominence in the American conscience. It, but, but when I was a kid, track was a big deal. Coliseum <laughs> realized, I mean, it was a really big deal. How do we recapture some of that interest in track and field, not just once every four years, but ongoing? Well, you know, track and field is the second watch sport in, in, in the Olympic Games, second to gymnastics. And I think what happens is that so many other sports have gotten a lot of attention, especially like soccer has gotten a lot of attention, you know, men's, men's baseball, women's softball. And, and it's great because now, kids, especially young women, can be exposed to a lot more in sports. And we still have a lot of fans. We still have people that come out and support their kids. But at the same time, now kids can get involved in a lot of different activities. As a coach, you You've had a tremendous record in dual meets. You always have a dual meet against USC. And uh, tell us about the excitement of, of the dual meet format. Oh, wow. That, that, that's a, um, a meet that we pray for to hurry up and come. <laughs> it's usually at the end of, end of April, the first part of May. I think I've won like 14 straight dual meets. Uh, I think they've beat me the last couple of years. That's going to change this year. <laughs> that will change. Uh, but it's fantastic. You know, uh, Ron Alice has put together a great program over there at USC, and we, we just love that meet. That's what, we, that's what we get up for. You've been at the pinnacle both as a coach and as an athlete. As you look back on your career, is there one aspect that's more satisfying than the other? Wow. Um, I think probably winning the three national titles that I've won, the two indoors um, and the championship we won outdoors because we had been second for so long. And that was a, a pretty great accomplishment. Uh, um, I like the fact that um, the Pac-12 now is, has now embraced more women in coaching. I, I really like, like seeing a lot more women in coaching. For me, my, my greatest accomplishments have definitely been my championships. And to really, my graduation rate is really important to me. It ranges anywhere between 85 and 96 percent. And I, I'm very proud of that. And I was the first person in my family to graduate, so I really know the importance of education. Coach, we're almost out of time, but just one key, if you have for any young athletes, you know, high schoolers right now who are looking to compete in college, what's the most important thing they need to do? Get your academics in order. Get your academics in order and have fun.
Don't let anyone tell you that you just have to do one event or two. You know, s spread your love around. You know, if you want to do two or three different events, that's great. Do that. But have fun. Make sure, you know, you, you go to summer camp and make sure you're a kid. You know, you go to the prom and you have fun because there, you're going to have time to really hone into exactly what you want to do. But explore everything as a young person. Coach, love sitting down with you. Good luck to the Bruins in the upcoming season. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll come right back for more UCLA Bruin Talk after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi everybody and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our Student Athlete of the Week. This week we honor Wes Dunlap of the men's volleyball team as our Athlete of the Week. Going into a big stretch of matches, Wes leads the number one team in hitting, ranked at the top of the leaderboard in MPSF statistical categories in hitting percentages. Dunlap helped the team sweep Cal State Northridge in various critical blocks. A quick hitter, Wes led the nation in kill percentages at 446 and is a considerable force this year as well for the Bruin team. Congratulations, Wes, and good luck with the rest of your season. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. Hey, Allison. Don't tell anybody, but UCLA women's tennis are 12 and 0. They're number one in the country. <laughs> okay, we don't well, want to put a target on it. their back. But we're actually joined by a couple of members of the women's tennis team. We're going to talk about the great start the Bruins are off to. We have Carling Seguso and Courtney Dolehide with us. Is that something we want to whisper or we want to shout? Um, I think you can shout it. I mean, we. Uh, <laughs> I think when we had our number one ranking before we played SC, we were kind of wanting to hush it because we weren't sure exactly we don't want to get ahead of ourselves but now I think it's okay to shout because we've yeah I think we're pretty excited about it we still want to stay humble and, and focused obviously but we're pretty excited especially after the win against SC tennis is, is a game uh, obviously of great physical demands but there's a huge mental edge to tennis too so I, I was kind of joking but seriously things like that you know whether you want to crow about the fact that you're undefeated and number one or whether that's going to motivate somebody how much of a role does the the mental part of that play in getting prepared for an opponent I think the mental side of tennis is probably the most important part um, so I definitely think we don't want to dwell on the fact that we're number one, um, especially because there's teams that we haven't faced yet, like Stanford and Florida. But we're definitely still excited about it and trying to stay motivated. Carly, it's the first time the Bruins have been number one for a while, yeah. and uh, obviously that does have to breed confidence on the mm -hmm. team. Ha can, you, can you sense a different attitude even in the, the, the weekday practice sessions? Um, we were actually told to really stay humble, and I think most of the girls have, especially, it's more, I think, for the freshmen because um, we have such a new team, and us older girls, we haven't been one yet, so we're just taking it as, oh, this is nice, like, we've never experienced this, so I think it's more for the freshmen, like, coming in saying, we're number one, like, stay humble, this doesn't always happen, and, but I think in terms of practice, they've been great. We have, well, we're both sort of injured, and we have some other people yeah. who have, some little tiffs, but um, it's been going well. I mean, everyone's just training just like they were before, and I think everyone's just really excited. I think especially because of the injuries, we're trying to stay really focused because you never know what can happen, you know? So we're just trying to practice hard and make sure that we stay ready and on our game. Not only are you guys undefeated and ranked number one in the country, which is going to bolster confidence, but you guys also won the first indoor national championship for UCLA. Tell us a little bit about that experience and how it's going to help you guys going forward. Yeah, it was really exciting. It's nerve wracking. Uh -huh. it's, <laughs> I mean, I only played doubles, and then, well, she played yeah. doubles too, so it was, we are more watching the whole time and it's so nerve-wracking. That's almost more nerve-wracking, right? Is, it is so, it's, it's the worst. It's definitely more nerve-wracking like watching. Like cheering for six girls, not knowing <laughs> what's going on, looking at the scoreboard, yeah. but it, it was a great experience. 
It was really exciting. I mean, I know last year we didn't have the best um, run at National Indoor, so it was completely different this year. We got to experience, you know, going all the way to the end and actually winning and then sprinting to the airport to try to catch our flight. <laughs> Taking and midterms. Yeah, it was, it was great. Probably yeah, well, a lot happens tournament. when you're on the road. I mean, student life doesn't end. Mm -hmm. You've got midterms. You've got to take them. It's, yeah. a, it's a big demand, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I took actually one right after we won. We got to the airport, and Stella was like, you know what, Carling? I'll give you an hour to study, and then you're taking it before you get on the plane. I'm like, you know what? Just give it to me. Like, <laughs> At that point, after you win a national championship, you really yeah, don't, exactly. don't want to say I don't care, but it's a little it's like, yeah. in the back of your mind. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell, Tell me about the difference between playing indoors and playing outdoors. I mean, people that grew up in California play tennis outdoors. What's it like going inside and you don't have the wind and the sun and all the other things to contend with? Indoors is um, it's an advantage for most hard hitters because there is no wind. It's um, a lot faster. It's a lot louder. It's personally... I like indoors, but it's definitely something you have to adjust to. Most teams actually are indoor teams. So besides the California teams, a couple of Florida teams, a lot of teams are already like ready for that competition and ready. They know that game style, so it's hard to adjust to. That's why we always go out a couple of days early to, yeah. I mean, I think your game is definitely suited for indoor tennis because Carr hits the ball really hard. So it's good for some of us. Um, and I come from Chicago, so I'm used to playing indoor. And I think a lot of our team also, you know, is from the East Coast or the Midwest. So I think we all are kind of used to indoor tennis, but it's definitely a change. Well, Courtney, you get to play here at one of the great venues anywhere for the LA Tennis Center on campus. It's nice to have that as your home arena, isn't it? Yeah, our courts are great. I think, you know, it makes practice more enjoyable knowing that you're playing in a huge stadium. Um, so I, I love it. There's competition not only when you play other schools, but there's competition in your practices, too. You're always playing against your teammates, always trying to see who's better, always kind of climb up the ladder. Uh, wh wh sometimes is the practice more intense than the actual competitions? I don't think it's more intense, but I definitely think that the competition within our team helps us a lot. So I think that that's great, but um, there's nothing that really compares to competition. Tell us about the focus that your mind gets into before a match. I think we all have unique routines. Um, for me personally, I just listen to my iPod and you know we'll just joke around with each other before the match and we have our cheer that we do and we kind of just pump each other up. And I think that that's what makes you know college tennis different from junior tennis before because now it's more of a team thing and you have your teammates to support you and I think it really helps. Uh, Carling, uh, you grew up in a tennis family and of course most tennis that people watch is an individual sport but in this team concept it's got to be thrilling and exciting to, to be involved in the matches. Oh I love it. I College tennis totally changed my view on tennis. I mean in, coming into before college you go juniors and it's all individual and I don't find that as fun but just having your teammates there and the support and the screaming and just getting to know everyone so well and becoming like sisters it just makes the experience so much more fun. Playing doubles always interesting and uh, you know it's a fast 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 game. Um, how do you like playing doubles compared to playing singles? I love doubles. I love having a, a teammate out there with me. It's so much fun because if, if you're a little off they're there to support you, pick you back up and it is a faster game and I kind of I do like that in a way, and it's also much shorter, so it's much higher intensity, and just the energy and the support is so much better, and I, I personally love doubles. And Courtney, how about you? You like the doubles? I, I agree with Carr. It's, you know, it's really fun having a teammate there, and also it starts off the match, so you can kind of gauge the other team that you're playing and see where their energy level is, and I think so far this season, our team has brought a lot of energy to the table right from the start, so... I think it always, it's helped us, so. How long does it, help, does it take you to get comfortable with a doubles partner? And how different is it when you're paired with somebody else? Um, it definitely depends on the partner. Um, I mean, if you're close with them off the court, I think it's a lot easier and there's a lot more team chemistry. Um, but it, it takes a few matches. 
your freshmen have really played an integral role in your success so far this season and both of you being older members of the team how have you guys showed them you know how to be a Bruin and how to train like a Bruin and how to go to school like a Bruin how has mentoring them affected you guys it's more like getting them to time manage and to be prepared before matches they've they've come like a long way recently especially start traveling because our individual season I feel like it's harder to be a team because everyone's playing at different places different areas but now as a team they've really come along and they've matured it's more just I don't know how to explain it. it's just experience. telling them it's yeah it's just experience yeah. they're getting better with it and definitely I think they're definitely learning um, it was hard at first you know there's four of them so they they have each other and so they're not as forced to you know get right into it last year I was the only freshman so um, I had a lot of upperclassmen helping me and this year there's there's four of us and four of them so um, I think that they're doing you know a great job lately especially with schoolwork and you know just I think they bring a ton of energy to practice and um, it's really fun they're great girls they work really hard so mm -hmm. Yeah. What, Carly, what's more important, knowing your opponent's game or knowing your own game? I think for myself it's confidence, just knowing that like I can hit my shots and I'm feeling good. Because if I feel like that, then I feel like if I'm told the other game, the other girl's game, then I'm fine. I, it's all down yeah. to confidence. I feel like cause I'm a hitter, so it's more of me feeling good about myself than how they are playing. You mentioned, uh, Courtney, that Carling hits the ball real hard. How about your game? What's the strength of your game? I, I think I'm similar. I think my serve and my forehand are my strengths. So I think we're both in that aspect hitters. And that's why it's it's definitely important for us to be comfortable with our own games. And I know both of us warm up for a pretty long time to make sure that we're you know, on point. You guys have gotten off to one of the fastest starts in women's, women's tennis history here at UCLA. What are you looking forward to most for the rest of the season, and what can fans expect from the Bruins? We're looking, well, obviously, we're looking forward to NCAs. I mean, it's this year it's in Georgia, and we played there before, and the energy is great. The, the heat is actually it's really hot, but um, <laughs> what can we look forward to? Um, support. I mean, I think support for we had the best support we've ever had probably this year for Cal. Yeah. And it was amazing. We couldn't ask. And a come from behind win. Yeah. yeah. Right. It really oh, helps. That, to, was, that, was that was really intense. exciting. It really helps to have, you know, a crowd. And I think that's why indoors was so great. And Cal, when we had Cal here, we had a ton of people come out and, and support. It just raises the energy. And I think that's what's going to make NC is so exciting, being in Athens and having so many people um, there. So, Well, great things in store for the Bruins. It's the LA Tennis Center. It's right on campus. Stop by and watch them play. And if you can't do that, follow them on UCLABruins.com. I want to thank you both for stopping by. Congratulations for a great start. Best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you. I want to thank you for stopping by, too. For Allison, I'm Dave. We'll see you next time. Until then, so long from Westwood.